supersize your business without burnout, or in my case, dropping dead. Sharon Hornell's me here, and our topic today is how do you build and grow and supersize your business without burning out? Did a bunch of research, and I looked at, and I thought about my decades of experience with different businesses, including my own, and realized I don't really need to research this one because I've got a lot of personal experience with it. In 2010, uh, I was running a couple of businesses, starting up a few new businesses, uh, and battling uh, the city of one of those businesses for the livelihood of our business. They had decided that our business, among all the similar businesses, was the one that was the problem in the entire community, therefore needed to be shut down. And uh, as you can imagine, that was a little stressful. Had to go to court uh, and all kinds of things. And I don't know about you, but if you've ever been to court and and been suing a municipality, it can be a little bit stressful. So that combined with everything else that was going on in my life and the fact that I was not taking care of myself in all areas and aspects of my life back then, uh, I knew better, but I wasn't doing it necessarily. Uh, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and actually dropped dead for a couple of weeks while they froze me and got my heart back uh, into shape and cycled my blood through freezers and all kinds of crazy stuff. I don't know about because I was in a coma. Anyway, when I uh, came out of that event and had an internal cardiac device and ICD installed, realized and did some research and because I always, if I don't know something or can't figure out what happened, I look into it, that if you don't make massive lifestyle changes within three to six years of an event like that, you're usually not here anymore on planet Earth. And I decided that was not an option for me. And so I started making massive changes in my life, my work, everything. And I think the biggest three lessons that I've learned from that with respect to growing and building and scaling a business uh, without killing yourself or burning out and just being fried and saying, I can't do this anymore, uh, are or if you do these three things, the first and foremost one, and from a selfish standpoint, and everybody should be selfish because if you don't take care of yourself, there will be no business. I learned that firsthand is to take care of yourself, invest in yourself and personally develop yourself. Uh, secondly, we want to create a business our way, a business that supports the lifestyle that we want to create and the life we want to live. We don't want to create a business just well, we want to create a business to help people and solve problems and make the world a better place, but not just for that. We have to do it in a way that builds on our strengths and that offers the world an example of how to create an awesome business. There's lots of awesome businesses out there that are super duper successful, uh, that are based on core values that are important to the founders. And there are businesses that are just businesses. They're just out there to make money. And we can feel the difference between the two. So you get to decide what kind of business do you want to have. I will say the businesses that you're just in it for the money, because I've been in some of those, are harder to run because you lose energy, you lose passion, you lose drive, you lose a desire to even create them because you don't feel 100% vested and passionate about what it is that you're creating in the world. Uh, and then finally, the other thing that I really, really learned was that you have to let go of things that you can't control. Control what you can, let go of the things you can't control. And you have to have a scalable business model. You have to build your business so that it can grow, right? You have to have automated systems and technology and whatever is appropriate for your business built into your processes, your systems, your daily routines, your reporting, everything. And the more you can, you can automate the things that are working and that you do repeatedly, the more time and energy and freedom you have to do things like eating right and taking care of yourself and getting some exercise and having energy and doing personal development and development courses and trainings and networking events and all the other myriad of things that we need to do to grow and scale and supersize our business. So those are the three things I want to talk about today. Instead of the, you know, 20 things I, I have learned and looked up and researched, bottom line is if you take care of yourself and your people, and that means, you know, having flexible work schedules, doing what's right, living by your core values. If you create a business your way that serves the people you're here to serve and the way that feels right for you and best for you and them, right? It's got to be win-win for everybody or there's no business. And finally, make sure your business is scalable, that you're, you're bringing people and creating processes and systems and delegating and all those things that we need to do to make our business grow without adding more to our area of responsibility and more to our little red wagon, my dad used to say. Well, you know exactly how much your little red wagon can hold. All right. Any questions, hit me up. 
Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow with another Supersize Your Business strategy, tip, trick, etc. Have a great day.